Good morning, guys. We are wrapping up our module on rock transformations. And next, we'll be moving into our module about plate motion. However, before we do that, we're going to take a look at evidence from Venus and try and compare rock transformations on Earth to a different rocky planet. Now, before I get into what we're going to do today, I want to take a look at our written argument from last week. On Friday, you had to write an argument choosing one of those claims and you have this diagram as your last piece of evidence to use. So we're gonna take a look at what probably should have been your argument here, or what an example of a really good one would be. I'm going to do my best to draw out some evidence that we had on our diagram that we went through class on Friday before you wrote, or and even on Thursday. What this diagram is showing is that this plate is moving to the right and being subducted underneath the Rocky Mountains and this entire plate here. Now, what subduction is going to do is drag that plate underneath the earth, meaning that the plate that's going above it is going to go through uplift. So my igneous rock is going to be pushed upwards towards the surface of the Rocky Mountains. It was underground, and now it's going to be at the surface. Now, since it's at the surface of the Rocky Mountains, it's going to be exposed to energy from the sun. So this is my sun. Isn't it nice? So once it's exposed to energy from the sun, the process that those rocks are going to go through is going to be weathering and erosion. Now, what that weathering and erosion is going to do to my rocks is create sediment because it's gonna break it down into small pieces. These are my sediments. And those sediments are going to travel because of wind and flowing water. And they're gonna go down my mountain towards the Pacific Ocean. They're also gonna go down my mountain towards the Great Plains. And as they keep going towards the Great Plains over thousands and thousands of years, sometimes even millions of years, they're gonna start to stack up in the Great Plains. And then they will eventually go through compaction and cementation, that force that is pushing them down because of the weight of all the sediments and water on top of it. And as they squeeze together, they will create sedimentary rock. So what we figured out using this diagram is that the igneous rock underneath the Rocky Mountains was pushed upwards because of uplift exposed to energy from the sun, and then created the rock that is in the Great Plains. Now, what our writing should look like is our claim should have said the sediment that formed the Great Plains came from the rock of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, this was claim one in your Google form. However, we talked about in our exemplar written argument and what to do and what not to do. You should have never actually said claim one. If you only said claim one, you did not get credit for your claim. You have to write in complete sentences. If you said claim one, the sediment that formed the Great Plains came from the Rock of the Rocky Mountains, that is fine. However, you had to actually give me your full claim. So my claim would have been the claim that the sediment that formed the Great Plains came from the Rock of the Rocky Mountains. Then we had our evidence and our evidence should be something that we can actually see happening. So the diagram shows that the plate of the Pacific Ocean subducted under the Rocky Mountains and uplift pushed the igneous rock of the Rocky Mountains to the surface, exposing it to energy from the sun. I did not say the word because at all in my evidence. I just gave what I see happening in the diagram. All of these things that I described, I can actually point to in the diagram that I've drawn out here. Finally, my reasoning would be that when rock is exposed to energy from the sun, it will be weathered and turn into sediments. The sediments from the Rocky Mountains travel to the Great Plains where they were compacted and turned into sedimentary rock. In this example, in my reasoning, uh, now I start to explain what I actually learned in class and how it connects to this diagram. This is where I have things that I might not be able to see in my diagram, like the weathering and erosion or the compaction. And I'm actually explaining the concept that I know. Uh, in this part of my, my answer, I actually describe, and this would be like my because or my why, how I know that I am correct. So this would be an example of a really good exemplar argument. Uh, you will receive your score for your argument in probably the next couple of days. As I go through them, I'll start to release them to you. And if you want to make edits to that to improve your score, you absolutely can. So what I am going to take a look at next is our work for today. What you're going to do as you're due first today is start off by reading this very top section where it says warm up and thinking about rocks. You can take a look at this picture here. And then just like Earth, some of the planets in our solar system are also made of rocks. So do you think that rocks on these planets transform? Why or why not? 
I want you to go ahead and write that in right here. And then you're going to continue on to this section here that says rock transformations on Venus. Click on this link and it will take you to a YouTube video. It's about two minutes uh, where it will give you some facts about Venus and kind of do like a simulated flyby or fly over the surface of Venus. And as you do that, I want you to look for two observations about the surface of Venus that you can make. And when you're done with your video, you can come back and put one observation in the top box and one observation in the bottom box. Once you are done with that, it says to stop here. We'll continue the rest in live class together. Do not move on today. There is a lot of moving pieces or a lot of different pieces of our work today. So we're going to watch some videos together. Uh, we'll watch some videos from Kip Texas, that teacher that we've seen in a couple of our models. We're going to have several different things open with our evidence cards and our reference cards and talk about what they could actually mean. So I want to make sure today that you are waiting when you are done with your due first. Do not continue until you've had live class with me or Mr. Love. Uh, if I see these turned in before live class, I'm going to make sure that they are deleted and returned back to you and you will have to start over uh, during your live class or after to make sure that you get credit for your work. So you're going to go ahead and do the top section where it says warm up thinking about rocks and then rock transformations on Venus. After that, you can close this tab out and then I will see you in live class.